Hi loves, so this is our note taking and research process, um, how to make sense of what you're exploring. So as we're delving sort of more deeply into our research and taking notes, it's going to be difficult to balance how many notes you take, what you take them on, and this lesson is just a little bit about how to approach that. So I'm going to cover why it's important to take good notes and research some important features of note-taking, including being meticulous and accurate and being active, not passive. And I'm also going to look at um, some examples of how to take notes because not everyone can take the same kind of notes because we're all different learners. So it's going to be very important for you to use this opportunity to explore um, the kinds of notes that might work for you as the kind of learner that you are. So we'll be looking at a bit variety of those. And then also um, just how to keep your notes user friendly. So we'll start out with um, why it's important to take good notes. You know, we often as the generation, you often as the generation of kids that um, have grown up with the internet, don't even realize when you're plagiarizing. And note taking is a way to avoid unintentional plagiarism by forcing you to put the ideas into your own words um, so you can be careful of that and leery of that because um, some of you may have even been burned before in that without even really knowing that you were plagiarizing. Um, also it allows you to focus on what's important while you're reading. I know that I in the past when I was a, a fledgling researcher I would take notes on every single thing rather than focus on what it was that was important to my research question. And so we're going to, um, so that's why it's important to take good notes so that you're not overdoing it. Um, focusing in on what's important to your research, not excluding the other stuff, but understanding that you need to have an idea of what you're doing and what you're looking for while you go into your research project. Um, also, uh, it's important to take good notes to understand and remember the material and make connections. You can't write a research paper on something that you don't understand. So notes help you make sense and meaning of what you are reading. In addition, it allows you to begin to construct your assignment, um, to develop some subtopics and start to make connections between ideas so that you can start forming that in your head and on paper. It also provides a personal record of what you've discovered. Now everything that you discover and take notes on that does not necessarily mean that it's going to go into your paper, um, but it'll be there as a record so that if you did want to go kind of tap into something that you hadn't originally thought that you might use, you're able to do that because you've created a record of that. And finally, it just saves time later on. If you take good notes, your research process or your research writing process, excuse me, is a lot easier. So um, the first important facet is to be meticulous and accurate. You always have to include as many details as you can um, in, in terms of your source uh, as soon as you start taking notes. So write, make sure you write down all of the MLA information. If you record a quote, be sure that you include something, you know, like an in-text citation like we've been practicing. If the author is Matthewson and you got it from page 245 or if you had used a web source and the title it was an unknown author and the title was Imagining the Future and it was taken from paragraph two. Oops. Um, you need to do that. So in addition, you have to have a clear system so you know which notes are paraphrases, direct quotes, and your own ideas. Um, this could mean color coding them. So all my paraphrases are pink, all of my direct quotes are blue, and all my own ideas are yellow. That can help you. Um, or you could label them with P, Q or O um, or any any way that you do that but if you don't have a clear system you might again run the risk of plagiarizing. Also you need to remember if you photocopy an article or a chapter um, it's important to include the page numbers because you don't want to get stuck not knowing and having to go back to the library and refinding that book so the, the better you are recording that stuff initially uh, the better off you'll be. If you make notes from a website, be sure to keep note of the URL, the date of access, and the page number for your MLA citations. So the second kind of important thing to think about 
as you're taking notes is to be active and not passive. And I've been drilling, drilling, drilling you this on this, excuse me, for most of the semester, but don't be a passive note taker. You know, passive note takers, they just underline, they cut and paste, they copy direct quotes without putting them in their own words. They write notes on everything because they're not sure of what's important and they don't evaluate and be critical of sources. They simply accept the source as valid and reliable. Um, I always use my little example of that, you know, fourth grade student writing a, a report on something. You don't want to use hers, but if you just blindly and passively are note takers and researchers, you won't even realize that that's happening or acknowledge that that's happening. So instead, be active. Active researchers think about what they want to get out of the research before they start. They look at the answers to the questions, um, look up or look for the questions that they have answers about before the topic. They look for connections in the sources that they're researching. So you're not just researching separate articles, you're looking at how does this article relate to this article? Does it contradict this article? Um, what new information does it add? What new component does it reveal to me about my research question? Also, um, active research note takers write notes mostly in their own words, focusing on their own explanation of what something means, not someone else's. If you just blindly and passively write down someone else's quote, you won't understand what they're talking about. Um, also, recording quotes that only went in um, specific quotes, direct quotes I mean, um, when it's important to have the exact words that someone else has used. That way your paper doesn't just become a string of direct quotations um, and or plagiarism. So now we're moving into the section of different approaches for note-taking. This first note-taking approach is pretty cool, um, really easy to take whether you're in a biology class or whatever. Um, maybe you can also use it for research and they're called the Cornell Notes. And uh, basically I've outlined here, in general it gives you less space to write notes, so you have to really focus in on the, the specifics that you want to take from that note, uh, excuse me, from that source, so that you can keep all of your notes from one source on one page, and it's, it's quite enlightening to have just one page of notes for every single source from which to draw. Um, so to set this up, if you can see over here, first you make a big margin on the left. If you have a, re a notebook paper, it's almost like if you fold it into thirds, or at least the margin with the three little circles, fold it over, keep this margin big, um, put any keywords, major themes, or recurrent patterns that you're noticing in your article here, um, and it helps you stay on track because if you're writing things down that don't align with your research question, then that's not a good source for you. So it's a really great way of approaching that. Second, you can use this large space on the right to take further notes and explanations and paraphrases and, and your own words and comments um, on those different topics and recurrent patterns. Helps you analyze those ideas and, and make sense of how that fits into your research. And one of the most valuable parts of this form of note taking is right down here at the bottom gives you a big space to write sentences um, that comment on the source as a whole and how that might fit into your research. So the Cornell Notes is a really great way um, of taking notes. This is um, a great YouTube video that reminds us um, about note cards. I know you guys have taken a lot of notes on note cards, so I'm just going to uh, play it for you right now. Hello, I'm Megan Lynn Allen for About.com, and today I'll share some tips on how to use note cards for research. Start with a fresh pack of notes. You want to make sure that all the notes for your specific task are the same size and color if need be. You want to choose clear, big, lined cards for detailed notes, and you might consider color coding. If there are certain topics that fall within a larger topic that you're researching, you could use pink for one topic, blue for another, and so on. Devote an entire card to one idea or one note. Don't quote two sources or put two ideas on the same piece of note card. You want to make sure that there's no sharing space, that each note has its own card. As you're doing your research on your topic, you'll be citing many sources throughout the process and numbering or lettering them. Be sure to include that number or letter in the top left-hand corner of your research note card. This will save you time later on in your research project, especially if you're doing a large project when you need to cross-check or look up some facts and compare them from card to research or research paper.
include quotations around any information that comes directly from a source or is a quote, and put brackets around any words that you add in yourself. Include everything. For each note, you'll need to record the author's name, the title of the source or reference, book, article, or interview, etc. Reference the publication information to include the publisher, date, place, year, issue, or volume, the page number, and your own personal comments. And write everything down. Don't pass over information just because you think it may or may not be useful later. If you think it might be useful, include it. Those are usually those little cards that save you when you're writing your research paper. Thanks for watching. To learn more, visit us on the web at about.com. So the, the, the next part is um, really similar to a note card. Um, it's just a, an approach where you cite, quote, paraphrase, and comment. And for those of you that like the straight and the narrow, this is really great. Um, you just write your MLA formation. Uh, this is, happens to be in an online format, but you can do this anywhere, just on a, a piece of paper. MLA format, cite your quotation, choosing direct quotations that can't, you can't say anything better, you know, you can't say it better yourself. Um, they should not be overused, but you can still address those. You can paraphrase then that quote and then comment and reflect on the significance of that section. Um, the last, one of the last things I'm going to talk about, at least in terms of forms, is my own hybrid. So during graduate school, I did a lot of research, developed a hybrid model uh, for note taking. So I was doing a lot of research online, and so I would take those, form them into, I would just copy and paste them into Word documents. And if you could see up here, I have created um, my already my MLA format. And I have all my page numbers as well, so I've, I've done that being meticulous and accurate at the beginning. Um, but what I did is I knew, I started to, even before I started to seriously take notes, I knew some of my subtopics. And so what I did is I color-coded them. Um, for this particular research project, I this is for the one that I'm doing for this class, um, st about standards-based education. So for my other side of the source um, is my orange, then I have my yellow, my pink and my blue, and those represent four different subtopics um, that I have been taking notes on. I then, the next step here is from all from um, all of my orange quotes, this happens to be from one source, so a lot of my, my, my um, uh, other side of the, the, the page um, comes from this one source, and I put all my quotes that I recognize down, and then I took little notes, so this is the next step. I'm, I want to. I would rather paraphrase this section, not um, and not uh, quote it directly. I would rather. Uh, it's really important for me to chunk some of these things out. Maybe compare it to another source. So I leave myself little notes. The next step then would be to take those and start to paraphrase them and put them into my own words, so that I can use them into that. So for me, my process happened a lot online, um, and you guys can choose from that as well. Um, finally. The Digo is a web source, um, a website sort of option to take notes online for online sources. I'm going to show you just about 30 seconds of this, and then you can access this as well. Hi, loves. This is just a miniature lesson about Digo. Um, it's an online. Digo is a really great. As, as a reliable source. Let me just uh, show you. Here we piece. go. So, so this is where my focus is going to be in these three paragraphs and it's a much larger source. But I've already done So I'm going to show you how you can annotate. <coughs> Excuse me. So highlighting is awesome. You can use yellow, blue, green, or pink. So if you've already determined some of your subtopics, like I have, I can actually highlight in different colors if the so you guys can check that out on our um, YouTube playlist and um, watch that if you're interested in, in, in getting engaged in Digo. So I'm going to find I'm going to finish just with um, making sure that you keep user friendly notes. Make the notes brief and selective. Keep them well spaced out. Show the relationships between your main points. Use your own words. Use illustrations, examples, and diagrams to visually represent your ideas when appropriate. Because just like with everything else in this course, it's not about just going through the motions. It's about making sense and making sense in the best way that you can for yourself. So good luck taking notes.